Good morning, Strasburg United Methodist Church, and I'm Reverend John Haynes, and I welcome you to this time of worship together. Today is Sunday, September 4th, 2022. Will you join me as we begin our worship with an opening prayer? Weaver of life, framer of the ages, we marvel at your artistry and the trust you place in us. From our first cries to our final breaths, we are your own. Bind us now to each other in ways beyond our choosing, that your purpose might find fulfillment in our common life and service. For we pray in the name of Jesus, the firstborn of all creation. Amen. Rich and I have prepared some music for you today, so I hope you enjoy our gift to you. Please join me in singing How Great Is Our God. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light The darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God Name above all names And worthy of all praise My heart will sing How great is our God Name above all names You are worthy of all praise And my heart will sing how great is our God How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God Will you join with me as we recite the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, 
it's time for our weekly Missions Moment video, and today I'm sharing with you another one of our ministries here in the Virginia Annual Conference, another one of those partners that we work with to do great things. My favorite part of the Hall of Heavens. I'm always getting along with the staff. And then and we do like uh, going out, like going out to lunch sometimes. Sometimes we go to um, everywhere. There's just like stores and stuff. We work to make sure that individuals are compatible and they start to form almost a second family uh, with how connected they are. Some of our folks have been together for years. We have four individuals reside in each house. The reason for the lower number is because we try to work very hard for inclusivity in the community and the smaller the numbers, the more opportunities present. Volunteers are critical to our organization. They help us keep budget items low, like maintenance and upkeep of the homes. And it's very important for our folks to feel proud of where they live. And often, some of our folks will come out and join the volunteers in the care for their home. I love connecting with the residents. I love working with our volunteers and seeing the level of commitment that comes from the churches. We have a great board of directors. We have great staff, so I love my job. Hello, I am Larry Dickinson. I'm the president of Virginia United Methodist Housing Development Corporation. Uh, behind me is Epworth Manor One. Uh, we'll be visiting here today and let's show you around. So we are in the central courtyard of Epworth Manor One. Epworth Manor One is an affordable, independent living apartment community reserved for seniors. Uh, here in the town of Louisa, Virginia. In addition to the courtyard area, the Central Community Center and Leasing Center behind me. Let's go take a look at Epworth Manor 2. We're in the center of Epworth Manor 2. Uh, Epworth Manor 2 was built about 10 years after Epworth 1, and as you can see, uh, Epworth 2 uses a quadplex style, which is different from the apartment style of Epworth 1. Uh, Epworth 1 has about 60 units, Epworth 2 has 22 units, and gives a very intimate uh, atmosphere for the residents. Our focus here, creating and maintaining a safe, secure, and well-maintained environment for the low and moderate income population of seniors. We're still in Epworth 2, but behind me lies our plans for the future in the woods. Uh, where we are currently uh, designing Epworth Manor 3, which will add another 50 units to the facility and give us a, a, a large platform here in Louisa County. If you're a church that has additional land that you control and would like to look at a mission of affordable housing for low income people, we would love to talk to you to see about developing a similar kind of a project. It's time for our prayers for the people. Will you pray with me now? Loving God, we offer our prayer this day in gratitude and thanksgiving. For in Christ you have laid a foundation for us that we might follow you more closely. We pray for the mission of your church, and thank you for the joy and encouragement we receive from you through our church family. 
Give us the grace to plant faith and build love wherever you lead us to the benefit of your reign. We pray for all leaders and people of this world. Give us a clear vision of the world as you intend and the will to realize that dream of justice and peace for all. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Bring refreshment to their hearts through Christ that they may know your abiding presence and power to comfort and heal. We pray for your creation. Convict us of the ways in which we break down and destroy the fabric of your world and give us the will to amend our ways as we seek to live in harmony with the goodness you have created. We pray for the dying and for those who have died. May they rest in your eternal glory with all the saints and light. Now to you be all the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And will you pray with me now as we give thanks to God? We give you thanks this day for the goodness and love that you have shown to us in Christ and pray your blessing upon these gifts. May they build your love in the world to the honor of your name. Amen. As we ready our hearts to hear scripture, will you pray with me now? Holy and merciful God, we have come to hear your word. Help us to bear it. Break down in us all that resists your will, and plant in us a willingness to turn. For we would live, we would be your disciples. By your spirit, come to us now in ancient texts, in everyday visions, in the need of our neighbor. We pray in the name of Jesus, our light. Amen. Our first scripture today comes from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them has yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. From Jeremiah chapter 18, we hear these words. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
So God spoke to Jeremiah one day, and he said, go down to the potter's house, and I'm going to talk to you there. So Jeremiah said, so I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he brought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the potter's hands. And you know, sometimes that's how our lives feel. Something comes along in life and just totally messes up our life. I love the story of the potter and the clay because he didn't stop there. As Jeremiah was watching the potter, so he made it again. I seemed good to the potter to make it. And then God began to speak to Jeremiah. And he said, Cannot I do this with you? For as clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. God was speaking to an entire nation at that time. How they had wandered away and turned to idols and their world was falling apart. Yet God was saying to them, if you just turn over yourself to me, I can remake you again, just like the potter. He was saying that to a whole nation. How much more could he say that to us as individuals? So let me ask you, could this clay ever fix itself? So why is it that we think that we can fix ourselves? Or that we have to fix ourselves or make things right before we come back to God? When in reality, we never really can fix ourselves, not really. And all God wants us to do is just turn the mess over to Him. And just turn it over to Him and so that He can put things back together. Because see, He's the potter. He's really good at that. I once watched a potter at work when I attended a retreat on cultivating spiritual disciplines. The leader of our retreat was an ordained minister who was also a potter, and, and during that weekend retreat, she taught us the intricacies of working the clay, kneading it so much that all the air bubbles and, and random twigs and rocks and other inconsistencies are worked out of it. She taught us that it may take hours for the clay to be ready to form and shape, but that after all that work is done, there's only a very short time available to, to the potter to work with all that is left before that medium needs to be reworked and made ready for molding once again. Now, we've all seen pottery when it's been made well. And if you have kids, you've probably seen some of the other type of pottery that's out there that, that comes from the imagination of kids in elementary art classes. And if you talk to any potter, you will discover that there are inconsistencies in what a human hand may do. Yes, you, you may have pieces that look similar, and you can probably recognize them as belonging to a certain potter. But each piece of handmade pottery is unique. It's no wonder that Jeremiah uses this image of a potter and the clay to talk about Israel's relationship to God. God is the potter. The nation of Israel is the clay. And since God is the potter, God can shape and form Israel in whatever way God wants to. That's the lesson from Jeremiah today. And Jeremiah tells his listeners that if the clay doesn't behave, well, it can be thrown back into the slot pile for another reworking. Or, or perhaps it can be molded into a different form. Jeremiah warns his fellow Israelites that God wants them to change. To not be so rebellious, to quit doing evil things. Jeremiah says that, that God can always change God's mind, that God can always decide to create something new. God can always start again. The comparison between a lump of clay and the nation of Israel, well, it can only be stretched so far. Unlike a, a lump of clay that, that sits there without thinking and, and feeling, we humans have free will to do what we want to do, even if it's destructive and evil. And unlike a, a human potter who makes mistakes, we know that God does not make mistakes on us. Instead, it is our willful disobedience that perverts what God wants us to be and who God wants us to be. You see, God is the potter who shapes us. 
and wants us to be a beautiful pot or plate or maybe even a teacup or a magnificent work of art. But our stubbornness may change that plan. I think about the ways that we interrupt God's perfecting grace in our lives when we rebel, when we don't listen, when we act out of our own selfishness. And the truth is, as human beings, our capacity to be evil knows no bounds. And our capacity to be good also knows no bounds. Now, in my lifetime, I have never met a truly evil person, nor have I met someone inherently good. I haven't seen those extremes personally. In my experience, everyone is a mixture of both good and bad. We are complex people who are imperfect. Like the clay that needs to be worked, we need to continue to have the imperfections needed out of us. In in Psalm 139, the other text we heard this morning, we are told that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I like to think that we are fearfully made because of our great capacity to be evil. And I like to think that we are wonderfully made because of our great capacity to do good. I believe that when God looks at us, God sees all the possibilities, both good and bad, existing at the same time. When my wife and I first became parents, we were scared. We were scared that we would make mistakes, that somehow we would unconsciously mess up this child that we were given stewardship over. But there were moments of great joy also, and hope. When I held both of my newborn boys in my arms, both my oldest son Wesley and my youngest son Gabriel, I remember looking at that little bundle of human being that weighed less than 10 pounds and thinking, who will you be? What will you do? Who are you? And perhaps like a parent of a newborn child, God holds us up and wonders, what great good or what great evil may reside in our hearts and in our lives? What potential do we have in this life and the life to come? Or perhaps in the words of Jeremiah, maybe we are like clay that reacts to the touch of the potter's hands. And God as potter reacts to our cries, our hurt, our evil, our good, and changes the shape that our lives will take. Maybe God designed us to do one thing, and over time we turned out another way. Maybe our imperfections just keep showing up, and God needs to continue to work on us. Sometimes we need to be reworked. A little moisture added here, the patient touch of the potter there, and we need to stay malleable, open to God's touch. Now, psychologists say that our brains don't fully develop until we are 25, and That's when things start to solidify. Who we are and why we do things seems to finally be made whole. Before that point, we are naturally taking in information and continuing to learn. And this is why it's easy for someone who's young to learn a foreign language faster than someone who's older. It's as if we are a lump of clay that has not yet been fired. But just because our brain may solidify in the same way a piece of pottery is fired and becomes hard and brittle... I don't think our spirituality ever does the same thing. You see, I think we have to work on our flexibility and and malleability. We have to be open to the Holy Spirit touching our lives throughout the length of our lives. We have to be open to hearing what God is saying to us. You see, I believe that God is active in our life, even when we are not aware of it. I like to believe that our lives are like a lump of clay on a spinning wheel. And that God is constantly touching every human life in this world, trying to shape us into who we ought to be. And I believe that God continues to work out the air bubbles, removes the twigs, and works on us until we are that perfect vessel or that work of art. Because of our freedom to do good or to do evil, God does not control or predetermine how we are going to be. The author of Psalm 139 does say that God knows our inward thoughts, that God has knit us together in our mother's womb. But I believe that we also have the ability to challenge and accept or cooperate with God's intention for our lives. God is always here to help shape us into the beings we ought to be. Part of a Christian's journey through life is to recognize 
when our lives have hardened, when our hearts have become brittle, when we have become stubborn, unyielding vessels that reject God. And like the targets of Jeremiah's words, we must know that evil will catch up with us when we do. In all of his prophecies, though, Jeremiah never says that God's people will be thrown away or left behind. No matter what, God is faithful. Know that God does not cast you aside and that God does not cast me aside. Know that we will not be thrown away or lost in the trash. Instead, as long as we live, God will continue to work on us. A light touch here, a push there, and we will continue to be shaped if we are willing to let God move us and move in us. The words of Psalm 139 are as much for us as they were to the covenant people of the Old Testament. The words of Jeremiah ring true in our ears too, as we survey the rebelliousness of this world and the forgetfulness we have of a God that created us and formed us and molded us and shaped us. As you go out into the world today, I challenge you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I challenge you to be assured that God will always be with you, needing you and pushing you to grow into the person you ought to be. I challenge you to ask for forgiveness for all the evil that you do. Remember your sins and try to live a better life. I challenge you to submit to the touch of the master's hand. And finally, know that God loves you and works on you like a potter works on the clay. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace and give give you